Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to be talking about cardiac and vascular function curves, which is essentially what this figure is right here. Now at first glance, this figure looks awfully complicated, mainly because we have two different sets of curves. In one case, we have these curves right here, which appear to have a positive slope, and then they're intersected by these other curves, which have a negative slope. So there's two sets of curves, and each one of these represents something different. Okay? And so we basically need to talk about what both of them are, and then we'll answer some questions like what it means to be at different points right here on the graph. All right? So the first thing we're going to do is discuss what these positive slope curves are right here. Um, sometimes you'll see a third one. Um, there's not one in this figure, but I will uh, mention what that is. Okay, so these positive slope curves right here are basically showing how the cardiac output varies with the central venous pressure. So first of all, what is the central venous pressure? Well, remember that as blood is pumped out of the left ventricle of the heart, it goes throughout the systemic circulation. It goes to different tissues and then capillaries, and then it's returned to the right atrium of the heart via the venous system. And right before it gets back to the right atrium, recall that there's the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And really the central venous pressure is the pressure inside either the terminal vena cava, so superior or inferior, and or the right atrium. And this pressure is going to be pretty low, not zero, but pretty low. But it turns out that, generally speaking, as we increase that central venous pressure, meaning as we increase the pressure in the right atrium, the cardiac output is going to increase, and that's why this slope is positive. What this essentially means is, is as we increase the amount of blood in the right atrium, which increases the pressure in the right atrium, we're going to get a better cardiac output. This is a really important relationship to know, and in that increased volumes always lead to increased pressures. Likewise, decreased volumes lead to decreased pressures. So if we have a higher volume in the right atrium, that means a higher pressure or central venous pressure in the right atrium, which means we're going to have a greater cardiac output because there's going to be more driving force for pumping that blood through the heart. Greater pressure. And that's why these slopes are positive. Now this first line right here, this first curve, this is basically representing a baseline level of activity. So this could be basically you sitting down right now at rest, right? Um, you're not doing any exercise, certainly, but you're just at a baseline level. We have this curve above it, and this one might represent exercise or positive inotropy. Positive inotropy, remember that's due to positive inotropic agents, those are chemicals or different things that actually increase the force of contraction of the heart. So basically increases in stroke volume basically associated with exercise. Okay, so that's what this curve is right here. Now if there were a line beneath this, like you will see in some figures, um, this would actually be the opposite. This would be something either negative inotropy or it would be something like congestive heart failure. Okay, we don't have that shown here, so we're just going to focus on these two. Now for these three lines right here. Each one of these lines represents a different degree of venous return to the heart, really back to the right atrium. Okay. The one in the middle is a baseline level of venous return. Okay? This would be the venous return if nothing were done either to harm the venous return or nothing were done to augment the venous return. Okay? Now this line up here is augmented venous return. Now this is venous return above baseline level. And there's a couple of ways that you can accomplish this. One would simply be the skeletal muscle pump. Recall that during exercise especially, uh, the skeletal muscle pump helps prevent pooling of blood in the legs and brings that blood back up through the venous system, ultimately to the right atrium, which again increases venous return, which is what this curve represents. Okay? This could be through an IV or it could be something as simple as just consuming a lot of fluid. That will ultimately lead to a higher blood volume and therefore greater venous return. The reason a greater blood volume leads to a greater venous return is because you have the same size cardiovascular system, so if you put more volume in it, the blood has to be distributed around it, and so there's going to be more blood at any time returning back to the heart, to the right atrium. This bottom line right here represents pathologic venous return. So something is done to harm that venous return. Okay? And one example of something that could cause this is just either dehydration or fluid loss of some kind. 
okay? And so if there's less fluid in your circulatory system, in your blood, then ultimately, well, there's going to be less venous return for the opposite argument as up here. If you have less volume in your blood, you have the same size circulatory system. So if there's less blood, it's going to more or less equally distribute. And so at any given time, there's going to be less blood returning back to the heart, to the right atrium. So hopefully that makes sense. Now in terms of these points right here, wherever you have an intersection between these positive slope lines and the venous return lines, Anywhere you have an intersection, this is a point where the cardiac output is equal to the venous return. And so these are the only points that we're really concerned with here. The first one we'll look at is the control point. This is just a baseline level. So what this implies is the person is just at a baseline level of activity. They're healthy, but they've got a baseline level of activity. So you're basically just sitting down watching this video and you have a baseline level of venous return. Okay, so that would be what this control point is. So from this control point, how would I get to point E? Well, this would be something as simple as injecting a saline solution. So a saline solution is a liquid, and so if I inject a liquid into the blood, that would increase the blood volume, and that would therefore increase the pressure, blood pressure that is, and so you'd have an increase in central venous pressure or pressure in the right atrium, okay, because there's just more blood. And so if I increase that pressure in the right atrium, I'm also going to get an increase in cardiac output uh, because there's more blood, so there's more of a driving force to pump that blood out of the heart. Okay, But again, I'm not increasing the intensity of anything, so I'm simply staying on this line. Now again, from this control point, how would I get to point D? Well, D is on the same line as E, so we're still not changing the intensity of our activity. Um, but we're losing central venous pressure. The pressure in the right atrium is dropping. So how would I lower pressure? Well, I simply lower the blood volume. And probably the best way to lower blood volume without some kind of horrific accident would be to just simply be dehydrated. When you're dehydrated, you are lower in blood volume. And so what we would see there is a drop in central venous pressure, so drop in the pressure in the right atrium, and we would also see a drop in cardiac output. So that's how we'd get to point D. And again, if we're dehydrated, uh, the central venous pressure is going to be lower, and so there's going to be less of a driving force to pump blood out of the heart, which is why the cardiac output drops in that case. Now before we go any further to points A, B, and C, notice that point E is associated with augmented or greater venous return, whereas point D is associated with pathologic or simply diminished venous return relative to the control or baseline venous return. And the reason for that just has to do whether or not there's more or less blood. So for example, in the case of point E right here, we injected a saline solution. So there's just more blood. Okay? So there's just a greater volume of blood. And so you have a limited cardiovascular system. So if you're putting more blood in there, at any given time, there's going to be more venous return to the right atrium. Just because there's more blood, it has to go somewhere, right? But in the case of D, where you have pathological venous return, you overall have less blood volume. You still have the same size circulatory system, and that blood's going to distribute itself, right? But at any given time, because there's less blood, there's just going to be less venous return. So rationalizing the venous return levels at point E and D is pretty straightforward. Once we get up to this curve right here, it's going to take a little more physiological reasoning to determine why we have certain levels of venous return. All right, let's start at the control point and move to point B. Now in this case, we're jumping curves. So now we're moving to the exercise curve. We're no longer at the same intensity. So now we have positive inotropy, which just means that there's gonna be a greater stroke volume, greater force of contraction, and probably also greater heart rate, which means positive chronotropy. So the point is higher intensity, a line above. So we're on this curve, okay? Now when we jump to point B, that's all that happened. We just increased the intensity, so we moved to a new line. But notice that the control point and B have the same level of venous return. Okay, So if we think about getting from the control point to B, this would sort of be the case if we started exercising. So we start having a higher heart rate, a higher stroke volume. But there were no exercise-related mechanisms that increased venous return. Okay. So whenever we go to a higher exercise intensity, or at least start exercising, we know that venous return increases. 
Okay? And one of the major mechanisms for increasing venous return are the skeletal muscle pumps. There's also mechanisms like constriction of veins via the sympathetic response that ultimately redistribute blood and ultimately lead to an increase in venous return. But if we're at point B, this is just a baseline level of venous return. So B would be the case if we didn't have those compensatory mechanisms at play. Now let's suppose we move to point C. Not only did this jump to this curve that's exercise, but now it's associated with augmented venous return. So C would simply be the case where we're exercising, so we're at positive inotropy and positive chronotropy, but we also have those skeletal muscle pumps at play which are increasing venous return. And we also have things like the vasoconstriction of veins which redistribute blood to the arterial side, and ultimately that leads to an increased venous return. Okay. So again, it's augmented because there are mechanisms at play during exercise or in general a fight or flight response that increase that venous return. And so C would actually be more normal for exercise than would B. Okay. Now, what about point A? What could this be? Well, we're still on this exercise or high intensity line right here. But notice that the level of venous return is diminished. Now a good example of what could cause this is if you went out and ran in the middle of the summer, long distance that is, and you're sweating and you're sweating and you're sweating and you're not replenishing fluids. Well, eventually you're gonna get dehydrated and so your blood volume is going to be diminished, okay? And so that's probably a good example of what could cause A. So again, your venous return is gonna be even lower than baseline potentially, especially if you're extremely dehydrated. Or another maybe grotesque example would be if you had gastroenteritis and you had really bad diarrhea for a week and you're already dehydrated and then you go out and try to exercise in addition to sweating, again, your blood volume is going to be even lower. And so, again, you're at that higher intensity, positive inotropy, positive chronotropy, but your venous return is diminished again because you have just a lower blood volume. Okay. So hopefully this video made some sense of these cardiac function and vascular function curves. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.